Welcome to the shooting show. Later in the show we bring you the Midland Game Fair news, but first we're back at the books with German stalking client Frank Kind. Cameraman Wilson turns stalking guide as he takes out Frank, a German guest, in pursuit of a midsummer buck. We may have just started filming, but time is already running out. We spent half the evening in one high seat, but our vigil was interrupted by the muck spreader and we had to move. Now it's late in the day, and getting to the second seat and securing a buck will be a tall order. Glassing regularly, we spot a buck before we even get to the seat. Perhaps our chances are looking up after all. There's clearly no shortage of fauna here. As Stuart films the chosen buck, two young row emerge and take him by surprise, nearly running right into him. A slow ascent into the seat is interrupted by the appearance of another row, this time a doe, but will a buck be far behind?
back to plan A. Making the rifle safe, Stuart and Frank ascend into the seat. There's not much shooting time left, will they strike it lucky? Frank there, we've just had a fairly epic stalk um, into uh, our last high seat. Um, sat in one box seat for two hours, waiting for uh, the, obviously the deer to be coming out of an area and uh, we're scuppered slightly by a, a uh, muck spreading team coming onto the field and uh, basically, you know, we, we had to move. It was about eight o'clock and we tried to sneak into this high seat and there were four deer as we sort of came round the corner and basically there were deer everywhere so you know, this is kind of the hot spot waited for the does to clear uh, in front of us um, and then Frank got himself successfully up and into the high seat and as we're getting up into the high seat there must have been two or three deer behind us that were barking and giving it major protest at our, our present presence um, but we'd we'd already spotted a buck along this um, side of the wood, wood line here and uh, we waited for him to just gently peel into the wood line uh, wood in front of us and we got ourselves into the seat and Lady Luck smiled on us and we ended up with uh, the book just walking out onto the corn and gun on him, camera on him and Frank did the business and back is the book of the trip. Um, this morning um, we uh, had a little book pop out on us, um, tiny tiny little antlers on him. And I said to Frank, yeah, yeah, it's a, you know, it's plainly a, a call book anyway. And uh, as the uh, little book had turned broadside, he sort of, you were just about to get the gun onto him, weren't you, Frank? And then uh, the little book bolted, um, and then behind him was, you know, the, the, the resident dominant book. So he was sort of kicking him out. So it's been a, a bit of a tough day, but we ended up with our book in the end, Frank. So well done, mate. <sighs> Thanks to the shit breeders. Frank got his book after a difficult stalk. Retrieving the carcass, we quickly make a plan to try for another in the morning. An early start the next day sees the daring duo installed in another seat on the estate. As the sun comes up, all is quiet.
Despite seeing plenty of wildlife, we don't get the buck we came for. Time to call it a day, or is it? The head keeper has texted to say he's spotted a limping buck nearby. We scramble to get Frank into position in just a few minutes. Now we just have to wait, and sure enough... Safety catch on. He's down, he's down. Explain what we've done there. Um, headkeeper on this ground came to us when we were sat uh, in the high seat this morning. We'd just come out of the high seat and he'd mentioned there was a, um, a deer that had been in this particular wood um, that was a little bit lame. He didn't know whether it had a broken leg or whether it had um, a lad in slipper. And this buck, if you look, was hobbling away and he's got this swollen knee joint here which is what's been giving him the problems. You compare it to this normal knee joint here. So at some point he's, he's either had that twisted in something or caught in a fence or whatever. Um, Frank got parked on this wood pile just to the side of this here. And to be fair, didn't have too much longer to wait for, the, uh, for this little book to come out and did another fantastic shot. So brilliantly done, mate. Five months sunk. Okay, that's our, our last stalk. Stuart, thanks for all, you've done a well job. Yes, two good books in the larder. Yes, very Some well. Some good shooting, good experience, and we've seen quite a lot of deer and still managed to you know, get onto two nice books, I hope. I hope you've had a really good time doing it, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing all the wildlife, the hares that were getting a bit frisky at Turtle Hill, and all, all the does and the kids, and Next time, I think you say you're going to come for a, a longer stay. Next year, maybe three weeks? Three weeks. Next three year. weeks, yeah. Great. Great. Frank Kind finding his mark twice there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Some of the worst amendments to the Offensive Weapons Bill, which would have seriously restricted shooting, have been withdrawn. One amendment would have banned airgun shooting by under-18s except at private clubs. Others included a ban on home-loading ammunition and making it an offence to buy shotgun ammunition without a certificate. BAS Chairman Peter Glenzer said he was pleased to see the Bill Committee steer towards common sense. Great Britain has booked its first slot in the shooting events at the 2020 Olympics. Shona McIntosh claimed the final Olympic quota place on offer in women's three-position rifle, after she made it to the final in the World Championships, then came fourth. Team GB doesn't have to send Shona in that place, but she'll surely be the favourite to go after that performance. She won the prone event last week, but as that isn't an Olympic event, there are no quota places available. Britain's doing well on the international stage in target sprint too. The World Championships included this new event, which combines 10m airgun shooting with 400m sprints. In the women's team event, Britain won silver and bronze. And in the mixed team sprint, Oliver Vass and Rachel McManus took bronze after a close and exciting finish. It's a huge achievement for a pair that have only been competing for two years. And finally, a shooting show special report from the Midland Game Fair. Always one of the biggest and most popular shows on the outdoor field sports event circuit, the Midland was packed with punters once again, and we were there to drink in the atmosphere and sniff out the news. We're getting some really interesting conversations as, as normal. A lot of interest is always on the R8, um, and it's still nice to be able to demonstrate how well and how flexible that rifle actually is. Um, we've also done something special for this show with Sawa, so we're able to show the same sort of thing with Sawa and how you can combine different air, different chassis for the 404 and change barrels and take it apart. And we've got a special dis display stand to do that, which is something new we haven't done before. Um, we've done quite a lot with some of the custom guns with the F3 and also the F16 Heritage to show some of the prettier Blaser shotguns that we can actually do as well. And it's nice to have those here to see what's possible. It's going great. We started off 9.30 this morning, first sales, coming in waves. 
you get quite a lot of people on the stand. A lot of people are interested in the, the new shell decal that we have. Uh, the flies are selling quite well, and the full bodies, which is our original decoy, uh, are still selling great. We launched it at the British Shooting Show in February. It comes in packs of 12, uh, the same price as the full body decoys. And the spring stick is a little bit unique because you can adjust the spring stick and slow the motion of the bird down or speed it up, whichever way. If the wind's really strong, you can make it a bit stiffer so it doesn't rock and roll too much. At the end of the day, people want to try. They want hands on guns. We're here to show a good selection of guns. We haven't got by any means the whole range, but a good selection. And people can come and try. We have a good, uh, good association with Basque, so we, uh, we sponsor the Basque coaching programme, so we take any prospective test drives over to Basque where they can have a few shots for free on, uh, all supported by Browning. The Liberty is a Liberty Light, which is uh, a new gun for this season, uh, designed not particularly for ladies, but for smaller shooters, including some men as well. Uh, that's always very interesting, and we have a 28 and a 30 inch model here, which has been out numerous times. It's busy, no mistake. People, people are coming to buy. With that, more, more the heavyweight garments now, people are starting to think about the weather changing. And, um, yeah, whereas earlier on in the season, a lot more you know, light garments were, were being bought. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.